Fala galera, tudo beleza? Decidi trazer para vocês um material legendado de grandes lutas do passado. A gente vai começar com a primeira luta entre Mayweather e Oscar de la Roya, tá? É uma série de quatro episódios mostrando um pouquinho dos bastidores antes da luta acontecer, mostrando muita informação legal, até chegar o dia da luta em si, eu vou também transmitir a luta para vocês. Beleza? Se vocês gostarem, a gente pode fazer isso com outras lutas que também tiveram esse, esse conteúdo, esse material. Beleza? Então, bora para o primeiro vídeo. Tamo junto! Three thousand miles apart, two men find themselves in the same place. In San Juan, Puerto Rico, the most celebrated fighter of his generation readies himself for what would be the greatest victory of a brilliant career. For Oscar de la Hoya, the routine is familiar, but this time something's different. The odds are against him. Unusual territory for a boxing legend. Meanwhile, just beyond the glow of the Las Vegas Strip, lurks an undefeated world champion universally regarded as boxing's best. Look me in the eye right now, Austin. Look me in my eye. I'm going to beat you. Now, as boxing's most anticipated matchup in years approaches, two men seek their greatest victory. Only one will find it. This is what I know. This is what I do. You don't want to make me your enemy. Well, I'm the top draw. You remember that. You can't be too good, guys. I chose to be the bad guy. I'm going to beat you till you respect me. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to make you call me pretty. I'm going to beat you. Like that. I'm still going to be this. Four weeks, two camps, all access. Got to go to work, baby. Got to go to work. This is an unprecedented, unfiltered look at the lives of two champions as they prepare for an historic showdown. This is De La Hoya Mayweather You know, and, 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 and being like a family. We have one mission, one goal. Team De La Hoya includes his older brother, Joel, one of Oscar's closest confidants. Rob Garcia, the conditioning coach charged with preparing De La Hoya for what many feel will be the toughest fight of his career. And a newcomer to the De La Hoya inner circle, trainer Freddie Roach. Roach has replaced Floyd Mayweather Sr., De La Hoya's last trainer, and the father of his opponent. Roach anticipates little trouble motivating his fighter. Oscar's one of, the, one of those cats that if you get under his skin a little bit and so forth, he's going to take it personal. And dealing with uh, Floyd's antics, the way he treated Oscar in the press tour, a lot of people want to see him shut this Mayweather's mouth. Making a toast to me kicking Oscar. <laughs> for De La Hoya, developing a dislike for Floyd Mayweather Jr. has been easy in the wake of Mayweather's behavior during an 11-city, nine-day press tour in late February. The antics began when the tour kicked off in New York City. Here we are in the biggest fight of our lives, and you have the pound for pound champion of the world acting like out of his mind, he couldn't control himself. I'm gonna make it a rough and tough fight come May 5th. I'm gonna make it a rough and tough, I'm so scared. 
Hi, my name is Oscar De La Hoya. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you ain't going to do it. He want to say things I say. He want to be able to get on the camera and say, he got to keep up his fake image. I'm real, man. Floyd Mayweather, steak and potatoes for life. Oscar not going to stay inside for y'all. I will. As the tour progressed, so did the provocation. Naked right, here you go, here. Come on over here, Oscar. Bring Oscar up here. There you go. There you go. He uh, stole my bag, took my belongings, a few books I had in there, my boxing gloves. I'm a professional. I've been in this ball game for a long time. I've been in many big fights. It's not gonna work. He said I stole his training gear. Okay, we'll do something about it May 5th. That's all I gotta say. Okay, I stole you. Now do something about it. Do something about it. You have this kid who is under a lot of pressure. Will he rise to the occasion or will he be crushed because the lights are too bright? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. If Mayweather is crushed, it would be a first. A boxing virtuoso with the swagger to match, the man they call Pretty Boy, has methodically steamrolled each of his 37 professional opponents. As Camp Mayweather opens, there is a recharged atmosphere. Uh, you come from? Uh, you come from? You come from out of the woods, bro. You never come from out of the woods. You need a shirt? Yeah. Early this morning, Floyd's uncle and trainer Roger completed a six-month jail sentence for a 2006 assault conviction. Hours later, with his young son Lakai in tow. He's back on the job. What'd that say, Kai? Who's my trainer? That's what you gotta ask yourself. Roger Mayweather's my trainer. That arrangement may be unsettling for a surprising visitor to camp, Floyd's father. Floyd Mayweather Sr. laid the groundwork that led to Floyd becoming a world champion at 21. But their relationship soured when Sr. was sent to jail on a drug charge while Junior was still an amateur. He left my life when I was 16. He came back into my life when I was 21. So I was, an, I, was, I was a man, and he always kept treating me like a, a child, like a little kid, and I'm like, I'm a man. When somebody criticizes everything you do, you don't want to be around him anyway. Oh, you doing that wrong. Oh, you doing that wrong. Oh, you doing that wrong. What, what am I doing right? I won the world championship, didn't I? Father and son's relationship, once close, turned tense. In 2000, Floyd made a tough decision. Uncle was in, dad was out. But now, after parting ways with De La Hoya, for the first time in seven years, Floyd Sr. is back. Floyd Mayweather Sr. is my father, and I respect him as my father. But Floyd Mayweather right here is going to do him. He's going to do what he want to do. It's Floyd's fight. Whatever he decides he want to do, that's fine with me. If he want a great chance, he'll have his daddy. If he want an all right chance, then maybe he'll do something else. He probably one of the biggest fights in the world, right? How'd he get there? Huh? Did he get there based on what his father said? Or he didn't get there based on what I said? I'm the one training him. With his uncle and father not on speaking terms, Floyd took it upon himself to clarify their roles as camp began. I basically called him and basically like, no, you know. I'm not in none of that touch with you because I still want to keep my father in some relationship. If you want to continue to give me pointed out, I appreciate it. If you still want to come, you can, but it's just that, you know, I want, I want, I want to ride it. You know, I'm just loyal. In the kitchen of his 12-room mansion in the outskirts of San Juan, Oscar De La Hoya relaxes with lifelong friend Eric Gomez. The afternoon is spent watching the Masters on television. We got a bogey look. This is very Americanized. Yeah, no, in Puerto Rico, we put it in the pot, in the stove, and that's the real deal. But I'm married to Mexican-American, so we use the machine. For De La Hoya, life in Puerto Rico with his wife and 14-month-old son Oscar Gabriel is a stark contrast to where he came from, 
a place where nobody ever enjoyed the choice of how to make an espresso. De La Hoya is from East Los Angeles, the son of Mexican immigrants. Growing up, his family often relied on food stamps to get by. Tiger Woods. When you're a kid, okay. you think that Tiger. the whole world is perfect. You think that nobody's going to do any harm to you. Your surroundings are just all positive and, and you're just a happy uh, kid living on the block. And uh, that, that's how I grew up. We came from a tough neighborhood. We were surrounded by drugs, violence. There's actually a few ways out of there, and, and one of them is education. Our parents instilled that in us, and the other way is sports. The De La Hoyas are a family of fighters. Grandfather Vicente, Father Joel, and now, by no accident, Oscar. I went to the park on a Saturday morning, and we were playing ball with our little friends, and all of a sudden I see my father's car pull up, and he's walking the uh, towards the mound at the time I was pitching. And he pulls, yanks me away and says, no, nope, you're not playing, you're gonna go, you have to be a fighter, you're gonna be a fighter. And so he takes me to the car and that was the end of uh, my baseball dreams. The skills young Oscar showed in the ring inspired big dreams there. And as he blossomed into a top amateur, one voice was usually heard above the rest. With Oscar's mother, you know, they had a special bond and she was Oscar's biggest fan. She always looked after him. She was at all his amateur fights. She's the one that would pat him in the back, give him a kiss, hug him. I remember fighting as an amateur, and I would be up in the ring, and so the first bell would ring, and we would be fighting, and I would hear this lady just yelling, ah, hit him, ah. And it was my mom. Oscar's father taught him the basics of boxing. His mother provided the inspiration. I, I always thought that she would be with us forever. Um, you know, uh, that she would beat this uh, disease and she would, she would live on and, and continue on being there ringside at my fights. And, you know, uh, it, it was, uh, it never crossed my mind that she, that she would be gone one day. In 1990, as it became clear De La Hoya would be a contender in the Olympics, Cecilia lost her long battle with breast cancer. Oscar considered quitting the sport, but the memory of her final words to him convinced him otherwise. Win. Win the gold medal. Don't give up. When she told me those words, they hit home. They hit my heart. And um, I think till this day, um, it's what keeps me going. It's, it's you know, part of the reason why I keep on fighting. Um, because of her, because of those words she told me uh, when she was in bed, uh, uh, sick. Lucy, good girl, come. Before he got married, Oscar was not a dog lover. Now, good girl. thanks to Millie, he owns five. Lucy, good girl. This is Lucy, and then this is Penny. Penny Lane, come. Hey, that's the mutt, she never listens. Get over here. Come. Get the ball. Go. 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 Boxers traditionally seclude themselves in remote locations for the duration of pre-fight training. But for this bout, both fighters are defying convention. The sessions are no less grueling no less intense. But for Mayweather, the comforts of home are just a short ride away after a typically punishing day. 6,633 punches. <laughs> When I'm out in wild boys, blunts and fillets. When I'm out in LA, boys, raps and switches. Now blood walk to this, now rip walk to this. Now throw it up, raise it up for that gangsta shit. What do you tell about Oscar brother? Oscar brother is a. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar, his brother, none of them even cut like that. They don't want no confrontation. I don't know. Don't be a fighter. You don't want no confrontation. 
Look. <laughs> I want some confrontation straight up. <laughs> That's my boy 50 Cent. AKA um Curtis. No, AKA, uh, no, AKA, let's get it poppin'. Don't nobody understand 50 Cent. We talk about things that he don't talk about with nobody else. He's the villain in rap music. I'm the villain in boxing. I tell him like this. I'm at the top. When, I, when I'm at the top, I ain't trying to look at who's behind me. I'm leading the way. You gotta worry about getting in my spot. People ask me, like, they, you know, they say you can beat Floyd Mayweather, right? I say, how could you beat Floyd Mayweather? And they sit there, they think about it, and then they get puzzled. You know why? Because it's hard for you to figure out the piece of somebody who's undefeated. And, and if I was in the rap game, 50, 50 if I was in the rap game, I think I'd be. Floyd Mayweather of hip hop. And I'm the, and yeah, guess what? I'm 50 City Boxer. Real recognized real. He a real. I'm a real. Period. PP lifestyle flashy, Flint went forever. I'll finish it for you. Back in the Caribbean, the sun christens another perfect day in old San Juan. Downtown at La Bambaria, a local coffee shop, an unfamiliar face sits among the regulars. He takes his coffee light and sweet and makes himself at home. I used to have a place like, like this in L.A. and then they, they, they changed and went fancy on me so I don't go there anymore. I don't like fancy places. I like where you can sit, sit down casually and have a cup of coffee. just. And, like, you know, no, no one really bothers you. At first glance, no one would suspect that Freddie Roach makes his living in the field of sanctioned violence. The stylish eyeglasses and easygoing demeanor are hardly indicators that this is one of the most highly sought after trainers in boxing. There you go. Come on. Boom! Okay. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. That's it. Be fair. Jim, now, if you don't punch, the referee's gonna warn you. Go right away. It's forgotten about, okay? This is a fight. Come on. Yeah, let's go. Hook right hand. That's it. Nice. Happy. He works hard, which, which everyone told me he does. The further we get into it, the better I'll know him, and I'll know when to push and when to hold back a little bit. I'm very happy where we're at. Get him on the rope, double jab, put his back, square him up. Double jab. It. It's taken less than a week of camp for fighter and trainer to confirm they're a good match. Floyd Mayweather Sr. is already a distant memory for De La Hoya, as Roach has quickly proven himself an adept teacher and able motivator. You know, be smart with this guy. I'll think him and I'll, I'll fight him. He's cute. He paints head movement. Your boxing ability. He's never seen anyone like you before. He hasn't faced an opponent like you ever in his life. You just got some room. This is your house, son. You. Hey, okay, baby, keep going, keep going, keep going. Dig down, man. Dig down, dig down. You got 10 seconds, huh? 10 seconds. Finish strong, baby. Finish strong, finish strong, finish strong. Come on, keep going, keep going, keep going. Good balance, good balance. Come on, come on, come on. You got time. He's way ahead of schedule right now, and uh, I was really happy with the uh, with the workout today, and that's how we're going to bring him into the fight that night. Um, fresh, happy, ready, ready to go. Not bored of boxing. Is it okay? Yeah, I feel good. I believe me. It's just, just time. It's just very... Really I mean, believe it or not, this is one of the best train cars I've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> the following morning, another champion touches down in San Juan. A man whose prior engagements with Oscar de la Hoya wouldn't make him a likely guest in camp. But since his two victories over De La Hoya, Sugar Shane Mosley has joined up with Oscar's Golden Boy promotions. Now joining camp as a sparring partner, you could say that the former welterweight champ is simply being a loyal employee. Okay, thank you very much. I'm just looking just to help out a, a fellow friend, you know, to um, so he can be the best he can possibly be in a fight. You know, I'm probably 
the best guy for the job anyway because of my hand speed and my movement and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm just helping out, man. I'm not getting paid any money or anything. I'm just, you know, the only thing I think I'm getting out of it is uh, keep myself sharp and stay in shape. I mean, what better sparring than sparring with a guy like Oscar, you know? De La Hoya begins training promptly each night at 6 o'clock. The sessions are closed to the public, and gym manager Jose Sanchez spends the evening guarding the door. De La Hoya's presence is big news in San Juan. Among today's headlines, how unusual it is for the camp's sparring partner to be a former world champ. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How's it going? How are you? Oscar. Good. Everything good? Good. I can't get any better sparring um, for him and for myself. So it's like you know, killing two birds with one stone. You know, it's uh, we're we're, uh, we're working together, and um, you know, obviously, uh, obviously, he's a, a great champion, um, and uh, he's gonna get great work out of it too, uh, just like myself. So uh, it's it's, uh, it's it's perfect that he can come down here and uh, and do me the favor. Walk him into it, though. set it up, okay? A little head movement, sit, cut him off, of course, hook right hand, okay? Let's go. With one of his new weapons shouting instructions from the corner and the other hurling punches at his head, De La Hoya goes to work. The fight is 29 days away. In April 2006, Roger Mayweather was suspended by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for 12 months. On Tuesday, he requested reinstatement and the right to man his nephew's corner on May 5th, a year after his involvement in one of the ugliest incidents in recent boxing memory. They put me back on, on the paperwork, let me work. They tried to deny me a living. Why? I ain't getting nothing wrong. Huh? They already know that. Floyd Mayweather was facing Zab Judah for Judah's welterweight title in Las Vegas. Judah looked strong early. Big left hand over the top by Judah. Crowd is going wild for Judah. But as the bout wore on, Mayweather fought back, and Judah fought dirty. Oh, and opportunity. Oh, and there's a low blow. That was a low, was a low blow. And Mayweather is badly hurt by the low blow. And now Roger Mayweather wants to come after Zab. I'm a fighter. I act on my emotion, and that's my nephew. How, how would you feel if someone hit your mama? Okay, then, then that's how I felt. What happened on, the, on the, the night of April the 8th, it happened. It was an unfortunate incident, and we all paid the price, including myself. I was suspended for four months. I was fined 50 Gs. Roger was fined 200 Gs, but it happened. We put it past us. We moved on. Bottom line is we're looking to continue to put the focus back on where it needs to be, and that's for on whipping Oscars, because that's going to definitely happen. Uh, well, that's the key. Well, right yeah. You've done your year, and you've and you forfeited the two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, that's fine. If we allow you to have that license, and something happens that we can trust you to do the right thing. Can we do that? Can we trust you to do the right thing? Sure you can. Because you've learned a lesson. Yes, I have. If, if I may interject, um, what happened on that night of April 8th is no reflection on how we conduct ourselves as professionals and how we, re how we represent the state of boxing. If we saw fit to give him a privileged license to be a second. I want you, Roger, to understand if something were to occur and you were a part of it, you know, you've heard of the death penalty in criminal law? That's how I would view that particular type of conduct. You have to consider that I've already paid the price for what I've done. So if I do it again, then that, if he say I'm gonna be banned from boxing, Boxing is what I love. So why would I want to be banned from something that I love to do? 
I would move that uh, Mr. Mayweather be relicensed in the state of Nevada, but subject to that express caveat, and that is that if there's another event that it should occur at any, not just this fight, but any time in the future, that you will be uh, revoked for life. All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Good luck to you. Man, man. What time, man? I don't know what they're trying to do. I should have hired that lawyer right there. Johnny Cochran. Is that, is that him? <laughs> it's like an O.J. Simpson trial. Somebody got off. Somebody's guilty, and it sure ain't me. Back at Wilfredo Gomez Gym the next day, the sameness of camp gives way to spectacle for media day. De La Hoya's job description alternates between puncher and promoter as the media horde floods the camp for the day. Give me some room. Golden Boy is in the house. Right? I mean, it's swamped. It's crazy, you know? But, uh, but it's good for him anyways, because he takes a day off from, uh, from actual sparring training. A sparring session with his wife is a temporary diversion from the looming presence 3,000 miles away. Man, I'm just an old dog <laughs> trying to survive in this game here. I want to be known for, obviously, Oscar fighting the very best. Beating the very best. Oscar can't fool me. He know he gonna get beat. It's just how he gonna get beat. That's what he better worry about. Get the get the get the get the get get Talk your trash. Huh. We'll see. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports.